Hey, welcome back, guys. I'm going to step to the side. I usually don't like to speak into the camera. You know, um, it's not my thing. But um, I wanted to talk to you about the things you really don't really hear about buying cheap used guitars. Uh, and the real truth is, um, if you really don't have the experience and you don't have the know-how or the understanding, don't listen to the YouTubers that are pushing a lot of the uh, cheap guitars because of the price point. Um, there is a real issue with um, these guys when you are listening to the the instrument with your ears uh, and not really understanding what has really taken place. There's some guitars that um, are of such quality that you'll never really need to do much to them and if anything you probably would have um, a real luthier do the work and not try to uh, attempt to do the work yourself. Um, now I'm 61 years old and I've been playing since I was 18, 19, not fluently but through the years I've uh, accumulated my own system of doing things. But Pushing that aside, here's a guitar I bought off a of Reverb. This is a Warmoth guitar. It's very heavy. It's a very heavy guitar. Alder body, quilted maple uh, top. I went and bought some Joe Satriani signature pickups and had a luthier actually install this for me. Um, bought the parts myself. It is a flamed maple neck with a flamed maple <laughs> fretboard and it's got um, locking tuners um, unbranded but they feel to be of some quality um, nice guitar very heavy though this this thing probably weighs close to uh, like a Gibson you know it's, it's about 10 pounds if not heavier this is a really heavy guitar okay that's a super quality but here's the thing that a lot of the YouTubers don't tell you, and this is the real truth, unless you have the tools and the know-how, stay away from buying um, used guitar, not used guitars, but cheap guitars from Amazon and cheap stuff from Amazon. I have been playing a long time and it really comes down to the playability of an instrument. Um, you've seen this guitar before. Now this was just a joke. I wanted to see what $88 would buy and I was kind of a little bit on the mark. Now when it came to this guitar it was really about what changed the game on this. Well I already knew that with every guitar you buy that's less than a realistic price of a quality guitar you better realize that the fretboard will probably be composite. Um, the playability will be very questionable, very harsh, and the intonation will definitely not be right. Um, they're probably, the springs will be very crappy. The quality build will be very poor. Um, now, to turn it into a, a fun guitar or an enjoyable guitar, you need to understand how to do some work. And a lot of these guys on YouTube, they know how. They know how to turn a cheap guitar into a good playing guitar. But if you don't have the tools and the know-how, don't ever go in this route. Uh, what did I have to do with this one? Well, you know, you gotta usually uh, polish the frets. Um, uh, sometimes you have to, if it has fret spurs, you have to work on the frets. You have to know how to do decent amount of fret work. Sometimes it takes a sandpaper on the back like I did with this one. And uh, intonation and knowing how to properly set the bridge. Um, what's the quality of this? It, it really doesn't have a lot of quality. But what it does have for the price, which uh, honestly, it's a good playing guitar. You know, I think I said I tuned this down to a, a half step to make the strings more flimsy. Uh, the best guitar, or the best playing guitar, is it comes down to playability. Forget about the sound, because you can run a cheap guitar like this through any amplifier, decent amplifier, or a DSP computer-based um, 
you know, DSP, uh, which will give you all of that fractal kind of tones or, you know, the McRockland suite or guitar rig or whatever you want to use, computer bass. Your guitars will always sound like a million bucks. It not it doesn't really, that has no factor in the quality of the guitar. Sometimes it does a little bit on the pickups, but most guitars on YouTube will sound great. But how does it really play? Well, the player has already spent time adjusting it for his playability, just like I would. Okay, this was just a shot in the dark. I wanted to see what $88 got me, and I knew that this was a composite fretboard, and I have played composite fretboards, and if you haven't, you're not going to like them. I'm telling you, they, they feel very brash, they're very dry, um, and to try to get a guitar into a very nice, smooth, playing, comfortable, play, playable guitar is another factor that nobody really tells you. Now, a lot of these guys on YouTube are more experienced. Sometimes you'll have a guy who's just demoing a lot of cheap guitars, and he can't even play the guitar very well. He doesn't really have the experience or the know-how. So there's a lot of cheap guitars on Amazon and on Timu, but I'm not joking. I don't care what manufacturer it is. You're going to have to know how to spend time in getting it to a very enjoyable, playable guitar. That's what you don't understand. Um, and if you do, then you know what I'm talking about. So this was just a shot in the dark, and it's an enjoyable guitar, but I did have to spend some time with this. Um, Here's a guitar that I've had to spend more time with. I bought this body off of eBay. Okay, and I even bought this neck off of eBay. This is a roasted flame maple uh, neck. It was pre-stamped. This guy sells um, roasted maple necks with rosewood fretboards on eBay. And I tried this on another body, which I didn't like the body so much. It was pretty messed up. But I saw this body. This is a Fender Squire body. And um, so these are some very rough pieces now. The only reason why it's enjoyable now is just by accident. But I've, I've had to spend a lot of time working on the frets. I mean, as beautiful as this neck looks, it looks great. It didn't feel great, you see, and it had some really nasty fret spurs, and I had to invest. I tried to do the cheap Timu fret files, and it just kind of really scratched the heck out of the fretboard, and you really have to understand how you're going to um, work on your fret end so that you don't start, you know, um, messing up the fretboard, and and you really need to spend time understanding what you're going to do, how to do it before you approach it. And this pick guard came from a Squire Contemporary um, that I had a long time ago. And then, um, so I bought the body. It didn't have, it didn't have the jack. It didn't have the bridge. And I tried to, my best. As many years as I've been playing, I tried my best to get. A better bridge on here and I couldn't do it it just wasn't lining up I finally gave up on it and just slapped this thing in here hoping for the best I mean it got really frustrating so underneath this bridge there's probably another <laughs> set of holes down here I just was completely beside myself because it's not really what I do I'd rather buy a guitar and just play it and try to figure out that there's really nothing else to do than change the strings and maybe adjust the string height. You know, there are very little things that I still do for guitars to get them uh, very comfortable. So this is tuned to A440, but the playability at A440, well, it's just great. Um, but it took a lot for this guitar to get there. You know, and I really did have to spend a lot of time on the fret ends. They were very sharp, very, very sharp. And I didn't want to start creating gouges on the corners. And I didn't, I was using some cheap Timu fret files that are not the way to go. There's a better fret file that has a smooth surface so you don't scratch your fretboard. And you can really cut the corners on the ends of the frets and smooth them out. 
And always remember that not always when you have, this is a parts guitar, so the parts you have, they're never guaranteed that they're going to fit right. And so like I said, unless you have the understanding of what you're going to do, it's one thing to have a certain expectation and then run into a wall. This just happened to work out. It's not always the case. And when you start investing your own personal money, you'll find out that a lot of the times you, you just don't know what to do with stuff because they're not working together. Now, so this just happened to work together. This uh, Squire pickups, well, I, I kind of knew they would fit in this Squire body, you know. Um, I tried to use a better bridge and it just wasn't lining up. But overall, it turned out to be a good playing guitar and I did buy some um, tuners from Amazon and they seem to be working fine. So it looks great, it plays good, it sounds really good with these pickups, but this was all sort of, you know, by accident. Um, but it took me a while to get everything and I really messed up down here. And this is with me having quite a bit of experience. I still almost gave up on this guitar. I just recently put this together. This is um, my uh, Iron Man guitar. I bought this guitar complete from a young kid out here where I live in California. I gave him 60 bucks. It was in poor shape, but it's the original neck to the body. And I could tell that it just needed a little love. It didn't have this pick guard. I had, this is from a Harley Benton. These are the original pickups. This uh, Hot Rails one is from Timu. And so you also have to know how to solder, okay? And uh, everything else kind of came into play here. I always put foam underneath my springs. It's the cheapest and best way to kind of quiet down your springs. And I did sand the back of the neck down and I reset the intonation and reset the radius um, for the neck, you know. And it's a good playing guitar. I didn't really know how this guitar would turn out. It was just a kind of a shot in the dark, okay. But again, because of my experience of tinkering around, I have the, you know, I have a decent understanding on how to solder pickups. I'm not great at it, but you have to have these skills. And this is why I say, you know, any cheap guitar you're going to buy from Amazon or Timu is going to need work. Uh, the only thing that I found with like maybe Firefly was probably the best um, bang for the buck. It didn't really need anything. That uh, Firefly Strat didn't need any work. Um, but you, you're always going to run into a case where things don't always turn out as they should. I bought another Firefly, a Tally style with a tremolo, and it had a, a coil split. But what I found out is Firefly actually sent me a used guitar. It didn't have the plastic covering on the pig garden and I started to question it and I realized more and more that they were trying to get away with sending me a used guitar and also that the uh, split coil wasn't really properly wired right it just wasn't really functional so I called them out on it and they refunded me like they gave me like a 30 bucks or something like that and so for the money I just accepted it but you have to pay attention to when you're buying things online, oh my goodness, chances are it will always usually need to be sent back. Here's my recommendation. Always go to like your local guitar store, pick up a guitar, and just feel how it plays. If you find something that you like and it feels good in your hands, that's what you want to pick up. That's what you want to buy. Try to avoid buying things online that are really inexpensive and cheap unless you have the knowledge to know how to put things together. And even if you do, like do-it-yourself guitars or whatever, there's still a process in that whole thing. And chances are it's not going to turn out the way that you think. A lot of these guys on YouTube are very experienced. They have a lot of woodworking understanding. They have a lot of electronics and gear understanding and they can make anything sound good 
and, and as well as I can, you know, and I have a, a wide selection of guitars. I have 14 guitars and I have, um, you know, um, like four acoustics. Um, but I thought it was important that you guys understand what you need. And so let me, let me push this, hold on just a second. Okay, so here's another thing. You know, I actually bought this and it was really crap. But a lot of times you need to be aware that a lot of the guys on YouTube, they're just pedal pushers, like a car salesman. They're trying to get you to bite on it. And when you do, and you have certain amount of experience, you'll find something like this to be somewhat interesting. And you're like, yeah, okay, you know, it's got a lot of the effects I want. But it's got very, very huge limitations. And you're not going to know the limitations until you get it home and you start experimenting with it. My advice is find something that works for you and uh, avoid the hassle of buying things you see on YouTube because a lot of the times it's not always what it seems to be. Uh, Scar My Guitar, this guy's got uh, tons of videos of him working on his own guitars. He sells his own guitars. He makes his own guitars. And, um, and so this is not going to be a, a general situation for anybody. You know, this guy has experience, you know, um, bald headed shredder. He's another pedal pusher and guitar pusher, always trying to get you to, to bite on some of this stuff. And a lot of these guitars, you know, they need work. Uh, he's not going to tell you about the work that it needs. Scar my guitar. Yeah. All the guitar he gets in, you, you see he goes through uh, an extensive process just to get them to be somewhat playable. Uh, these guys are pedal pushers. Um, and then you get the these other guys that are pushing new product. You get Andersons. You get this guy. And all they're really talking about is another Fender. What makes this Fender unique? Nothing. They're just trying to get you to, to bite on the, on the reality that they have a better paint job or a different paint job and now they're going back to rosewood rather than paul fierro which we all know paul fierro fretboards they just they really suck they're very dry and then you get these guys who are like well let's compare this custom shop versus a modded 220 dollar amazon guitar again a lot of work has gone into that guitar and if you don't have the experience your results will never be the same you know you have to be able to understand that um, and here's another guy this guy is infamous for buying a lot of cheap guitars he's not even that great of a player but um, I don't even understand guys like this I'm just like what the heck man like get, let's get real about your playability first and if you and if you're not a advanced player then you really shouldn't be demoing guitar because you're really doing a disservice to the community of people because it might look good but how does it really play what is how does it really play and how do you get it to be a, a good playable guitar and the fret ends and the fret work I mean so no matter what it costs you're gonna have to do work to this guitar also uh, and he's just trying to get you to bite on a, on a certain name uh, of a guitar and he does a lot of videos like that too you know so here in my closet, I have all my guitars. Most of these are not cheap guitars. Mostly are have been bought from Guitar Center. Uh, I'm usually at buy, you know, play it, buy it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then over here, I have a little box that's just full of stuff that I'm going to need to work on guitars. And I mean just about everything in here. And I got my little screws, and I got foam, and I got springs, and I got drills. I got drill bits in here. I got everything. I got wrenches and screwdrivers and this and that and solder and a solder gun, you know. Um, and then I have um, other stuff here in my closet because, you know, if you're going to start buying cheap guitars, you better start building up your case. So then over here I have all of the, uh, you know, Things to clean them out, to polish, to clean, spring ease. I got strings over here. Oh, I got a vodka cheese it. I got tape to do shielding. 
I got uh, parts and uh, all kinds of stuff in here um, for guitar stuff. So, and you're also going to need a workbench to kind of get into it. You know, um, here's something that I bought because I'm already familiar with this product. Now, I like the NUX product, but um, this is only being sold right now as, as far as I've seen. It's in Hong Kong. So, you know, and there's not a lot of videos on it. But what I did see, I found to be very interesting. And I wanted just to see, I'll do another video on this, on the MG101. Is it really worth the money? Um, now, this is not going to be a returnable item. But uh, I'm still interested in it, even though I have enough stuff to be uh, playing through. I really didn't need this, but I wanted to see... If it's really true, you see, I kind of, it might have been clickbait. I don't really know. Um, but um, I thought it was interesting since this is their newest generation. Now, I do have another one, the older one, the MG100. Uh, I liked it. It was a good, you know, I don't really use it because I got a lot of stuff. Like, I got an amp down there. And um, I used my THR-10X, you know, with a, a Behringer heavy metal distortion that's usually my go-to stuff and then I want I want to get really crazy I'll use my DSPs you know my Kiesel rig McRocklin Rebea Archetype guitar rig um, and uh, you know got the tone key and that is my interface I gotta I'm gonna invest in a new one because I, I know I need a new one so anyway that's all I wanted to say, let me get back to reversing this. Yeah, guys, so honestly, be very careful when you're buying things online. Stay away from cheap guitars unless you have, you know, some understanding and skills on how to do soldering and, and updates and upgrades. My recommendation is always go to your local guitar center they have tons of used guitars. Pick up something that you don't really have to do much to. Maybe just change the strings. And find something that is enjoyable, that has good frets, that has a nice neck. And save yourself the time and the hassle of having to bring something into your home that you're not usually going to like. It's just really rough. And I'm telling you, these guitars are very rough. They're very dry and they need a lot of attention. Um, there are some exceptions, but still, I think just about every guitar that's under $500 is going to need something, you know, so it's best to have the skills. If you don't have the skills, stay away from cheap guitars. This turned out to be great. My son actually wants this, so it's going to go to him. He's in Arkansas, and it's got a very metallic sort of red, but um, everything came together accidentally, just came together. I didn't really do much to this. I just uh, used this pick guard and um, this Timu Hot Reels and it's a great playing guitar. So you see, but you know, I do have a little bit of skills and <laughs> I'm not all that great about it. But you know, it's got decent tuners too. So um, anyway, that's my message for the day. I hope you guys find this informative. If you're in the market for a cheap guitar, go down to your local guitar center and find something that is very enjoyable and playable. Stay away from this cheap guitar stuff unless you have a certain amount of skills to fix them up and enjoy them. And I just so happen to have enough skills to get guitars even like this, $66 now because of the discount, because it has a uh, composite fretboard. But surprisingly, you know, with some sandpaper, and um, I didn't really do much. It just turned out to be decent. But, you know, that doesn't mean that every one of these is going to be good. Absolutely not, you know. Um, so it's just, it was just by accident, really. And the pickups sound okay, you know. So it's a, compared to my other guitars, this is really just a toy. Um, most of my other guitars are, are very expensive. So, um, but hope you guys find this enjoyable and have a blessed day.